Mount Tabor Baptist Church. So excited to be with you all again, Bishop Foster, Pastor Smith, and to all of the congregation and to all of those in the web, on the web, on YouTube with us today. We're excited about the word of God for us today. If you would take your Bibles and go with us to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, 1 Samuel, the, Samuel, the 17th chapter, and we're going to read some very familiar verses. We're going to start off right here at verse number 32. Again, when you have it, say amen in radio land and web land. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this, these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, what do you do when the giants come? What do you do when the giants come? Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder. How it should be thus all the day long While there are others living about us Never molested though in the wrong Father alone will know all about it. Father alone will understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. Amen. Amen. As we look at our text today, we find in the beginning part of the text, in the 17th chapter, that the children of Israel were in the valley of Elah. The valley of Elah. And they were getting prepared to battle the Philistines, which was their arch enemy. They wanted to battle the Philistines, but the Philistines uh, refused to battle them, one uh, battle army to army. They decided to send a champion out, Goliath. Now, let me show you a little bit about Goliath in verse number three. The Philistines stood on one mountain 
and the Israelites stood on another mountain, and there was a valley, which was the valley of Elah, between the two of the armies. And there went out a champion from the Philistine side. His name was Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. I did a little research on that. That's about nine and a half feet tall. So he was a giant of a man. And so he had a helmet of brass on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. That's 125 pounds. That's just the coat that he had on. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and, and a target of brass upon his shoulders. He had a staff uh, of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the spearhead head weighed 600 shekels of iron, that's 15 pounds, and one bearing a shield went before him. He it, it, it didn't even hold his own shield. He, had, he was so big, it couldn't hold his shield. He had to have somebody go before him to hold the big shield. Oh, you don't hear me today. This was a giant of a man. He was huge. Sometimes problems are just like giants. You ever been in a situation and, and, and that, that giant keeps on coming before you? That bill keeps coming before you. That sickness keeps coming before you. That trouble that you're having with your children keeps coming before you. But look how this thing played out. And he stood, verse 8, and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man from among you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Now notice what he did. The Bible teaches us that he came out Day and night, day and night. He kept coming out two times a day. He kept coming out and repeating this. The Philistine said, and, and he said, I defy the armies of Israel. Look what he says to them this day. Give me a man that will fight, to, that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard the words of this, this, this Philistine, they, they, they got scared. <laughs> they were afraid. We're in fear right now. We have a pandemic going across this nation, and then we have pandemonium. We have civil unrest. But I'm here to let you know that in spite of the giants that we are facing today, in spite of all the horror that we are dealing with, we still have God on our side. And with God, we are able, we are able to face our giant and to win. Say we can win. The Bible said that the Philistine defied the armies and he kept on coming out day and night. David happened to come to bring lunch to his brothers. And we see verse 12. Now David, uh, the son of the Ephrathite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose dad's name was Jesse. We know he had already been anointed to be the next king to replace Saul, who had been rejected because he had gone to the witch of Endor and he had done wrong against God and he had been rejected in being king, but God was going to allow his time to play out. It seemed like about what we're dealing with with the president, letting his time play out, but he has been rejected by God. I believe in my spirit. And so we find here in our text today that David heard the, the, this, this giant talking. He is the eighth son. Out of eight sons, he's the baby, the youngest of all of the children. The three eldest sons, Abinadab and uh, Shammah and uh, Eliab, were there fighting in the battle. The oldest children were the only ones that were able to go and fight. David, being the younger, had to stay home and stay with the sheep and attend to them, and return to take care of them. Now, we know that David also took care of Saul. After he had been anointed, he was sent to Saul to play soothing music to Saul because there was an evil spirit 
that would come over Saul. And when that evil spirit would come over him, he would be angry and he would want to kill people and harm people. And David would play his harp. And when he would play that harp, it would soothe Saul. Music has a way of soothing our soul. That's why we love music in the black church, in the African-American church. We love good music. And music has a way of stealing our soul. In the midst of turmoil and turmoil, we are able to be still. And David was the youngest, and the three elders followed Saul. But David went and returned to his sheep. And the Philistine, look at it, verse 16, he drew near morning and evening. Morning and evening. So you wake up with your problem. You go to bed with your problem. You wake up with your giant. You go to bed with your giant. Uh, difficulty seems like it's overwhelming you right now. But even in the midst of this, God has an answer when the giants come. Because giants do come. But giants will fall. The Bible says that David was sent by his father, verse 17, Jesse. Now go visit your brethren and see how they are doing. And take them an airpot of corn and ten loaves of bread and run to the camp to your brethren, he says to David. And David was on his way and he had all of this with him. And Saul, now Saul then and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep and uh, with a keeper and took and went to Jesse as he had been commanded to do and came to the place where the battle was going on. And when he got there, he saw this giant hollering back and forth. Send me somebody out of here that's bad enough to fight me. Isn't that amazing how the devil is? He wants to bully us and put us in a corner where we feel cowarded down. But I'm here to let you know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We don't have to cower down to anybody. God on the inside of us is greater than our enemy. Even though our enemies may be numerous, he, we are a majority in Christ. And so we find that David, when he arrives to the battle, they hear this giant. He hears this giant defying Israel. He says, send somebody out here to fight me. For Israel and the Philistines are putting the battle in array, army to army. And David left his chariot in the hand of the keeper and went to salute his brother. Verse 23, as he talked with them, behold, here comes that champion, the giant Philistine, the giant Philistine Goliath by name, out of the armies, out of the armies of the Philistines, speaking words, and and David heard these words, and when he came out, all the men of Israel ran. They ran from the giant. Don't we run from our problems? Sometimes we put our bills. You know, I was watching Sam and his son one time, and he he was putting all his bills in the trash can. Next thing you know, the lights went off. He was putting all his bills in the trash can. Next thing you know, the gas went off. And then the water went off. And then the phone went off. All of it, all of the stuff got cut off. And then they were coming to take and repossess his furniture. <laughs> now, he found his way out of that situation. It's funny. But sometimes that's what we do. We bury our head in the sand and wish all of our problems would go away. But I'm here to let you know that your problems won't go away unless you go visit your problem. You got to go face up to your problem. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. You got to deal with it. Say deal with it. And so first thing, now the first point of our text is preparation. Say preparation. David was prepared for this because he had already been taught by his father and by his tending to sheep. He had been prepared for this situation. Look what we see in verse 23. He hears the giant defying and causing Israel's army to cower down and run. Verse 25. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man? You may you hear his voice, but you need to see him. He's nine and a half foot tall. The coat that he has, the garment that he has to protect him, the armor weighs 125 pounds. The, 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 the uh, breast, the breast, the, um, the spear that he has weighs 15 pounds of steel, pure steel. He has a big old brass helmet on his head and he's huge. 
and he looks mean. His sword is bigger than our bodies. He looks evil and destructive. We don't know what to do. But the men of Israel said unto you, have you seen this one that defies Israel? He's come up, shall be that the man who kills him will, will receive riches, great riches, great riches. A present is involved. And he will receive the daughter of the king, tan in marriage. Good God Almighty. Now David heard that. It was presented to him. Okay? It was presented to him. And he already was prepared. And so he sees a vision before him. A present has been set before him. And so he, he, he decides in his mind, right? That David spoke to the man and stood by. He said, repeat what you said. What should be done to the man, here it is, that killeth this Philistine and takes away the reproach of Israel for who this uncircumcised Philistine is defying the armies of the living God. And they answered again. They say, whoever does it will get great riches. They will receive the king's hand in marriage and they will receive great honor. Eliab, his eldest brother, got jealous. Look at verse 28. You know, you got to learn how to let your hater be your motivator because all of us have haters. Everybody has a hater. Some people hate you for one thing. Some hate you for another. Some hate you because you got a new car. Some hate you because you got a new house. Some hate you because you got a better job maybe than they think they have. But you know what? Everybody got to cultivate the grass that they live in. Everybody got to take care of what they got. Don't covet what someone else has. Learn how to celebrate what God has already done for you. But Eliab was hating on David. Look what he said. He heard when they spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why camest thou down hither? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and your naughtiness of heart. For thou art come down to this, to just see the battle. And David said, what have I not done? What have I now done? He, in other words, I'm, I, you're getting on my nerve now. What have I done? I have done anything. And he said, is there not a cause? Isn't there something that stirs you enough that you'll get on your feet and say, I've taken as much as I'm going to take from the enemy. I remember Carlton Pearson saying, you got to take it by force. The enemy, when he comes against you like this, when these giants come, you got to stand up to that giant and say, in the name of the Lord, I come to you in the name of the Lord. You come to me with spears and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. And so what we find, David spoke up and Eliab got indignant and jealous. And he turned from him toward and spake after the same manner. And the people answered again about what would happen if you kill this giant. And when the words that David spoke were heard and rehearsed to King Saul, King Saul sent for him, said, come, come, come here, boy. <laughs> he says, and, and David said, look, look, don't worry about this dude. I promise you. They, they, look, David David was like a little, little, little street thug. He said, don't, don't worry about this dude because I got him, homie. I, I, I got him. Just let this put him, turn him over to me. Turn him over to me and the Lord. See, he was a godly thug, a thug for Jesus. And, and so he said, turn him over to me. And, and, and then he told him about his repertoire, his record. He said, my, my daddy entrusted me with the sheep and the sheep were in the field and a bear and a lion came and took a sheep away. And when the bear and lion came and took the sheep away, I came up on the bear and I came up on the lion and I snatched the sheep right out of their mouth. And when they came after me to fight me, I killed the bear and I killed the lion. And this uncircumcised Philistine who does not have a covenant with God has no power to fight against me. So Saul saw that he was willing to fight. He said, man, you're too young to be fighting this man. You, you're, not a, you're not a warrior. This boy has been trained to be a warrior since he was a child. But he said, no, nah, I got this. I told you what I can do. And so he tried to put his armor on David. David tried to put King Saul's armor. And King Saul was a big man. David was ready, but he was not as tall as Saul and not as large as Saul. And so he tried to put Saul's armor on. And the Bible says, he said, I have not proved these. He took it off. He said, I, I don't need this. I know what I need. 
God already prepared me. And so he said he went to the brook. He had his shepherd's bag and he went to the brook and he found five smooth stones. Isn't it amazing we have a five-fold ministry? And he found a five smooth stones. Why did he get five smooth stones? Well, it, uh, Goliath had four brothers. <laughs> and then, now, isn't, isn't, that, isn't that a trip how God is? God don't miss, do he? He got five stones, okay? And he got four brothers. So that means he ain't planning on missing none. When God is on your side, you can't miss. <laughs> Say you can't miss. And so the Bible said he went out. Then the day the Lord, this is the day, the Philistine, thou comest to me. Look, look, verse 43. 41. And the Philistine came and drew near to David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He said, <laughs> he laughed. He said, you look at you old young man. You know you can't handle me. I'm nine foot and a half tall. And look at you. And the Philistine said unto David, am I a dog? And thou comest to me with staves. <laughs> you come to me with rocks. <laughs> and a slingshot. <laughs> That's how the enemy is. The enemy mocks us, makes fun of us, tells us, oh, you got faith. Uh, your faith didn't work when you lost your loved one. Your faith didn't work when you lost your job. That's what the enemy will tell you. But, but God is setting you up for blessing in the midst of all that you're going through, the midst of your pain. You don't understand it right now. I don't understand it right now. But in the midst of all of that, God is setting you up for victory. He's setting you up for blessing. It's not a setback, but it's a setup. So the, the word says that God, the, 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 the devil was speaking through the giant, the Philistine. He said, am I a dog? You come to me with rocks. And the Philistine cursed at David. Doesn't, doesn't your problem curse at you? Your problem curses at you day and night. And so the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the fowls of the air. The buzzards will be eating you before this day is done. And so, and then the beast of the field. And then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with spears and swords. But I come to you in the name of the Lord who I represent and who's on my side. The God of the armies of Israel whom you defied. This day will the Lord, say the Lord will. The Lord will. He will come through. He's going to fix it for you. I know you're going through. When the giants come, God will fix it, but you must face your giant head on. You got to go after your giant. Don't be a coward like the armies of Israel. Run from your giant. Run at the giant. Look what David did. He said, this day will the Lord deliver you in my hand. I will smite thee. Not only will I smite thee, I'm going to take your head off of you. See, notice it now. Notice the difference. The giant was speaking at first, but David took over the conversation. That's why the Bible said the only offensive weapon that we have in the armor of God is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When the enemy comes against you like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. When the devil comes at you and tells you you're sick, say, with his stripes, I am healed. With his stripes, I was healed. When the enemy comes at you and tells you you're broke, say, I'm rich in houses and land. Speak those things that be not as though they were, and they shall be. The word says that and when I will give your carcasses, look what David says to him. I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, that all the earth may know there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. Now, I'm not telling you not to have a gun. I have one. But there are some battles you can't win just with a gun. You have some battles that you can't win with a sword. There are some battles that you're going to have to fight on your knees. You're going to have to get some knee ashiness. 
You're going to have to get down on your knees. And sometimes you don't even have to pray on your knees. You can pray standing up. You can pray in your car. You can pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. And sometimes you need to pray in the spirit. You need to, you need to pray in the spirit. And as you pray in the spirit, you're praying a perfect prayer. The devil don't understand what you're saying. But he spoke to that devil. He spoke to the giant Goliath and told him, the Lord is going to give me, give you into my hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose, he got mad and came and drew near to meet David. David, the Bible said, hasted and ran. Look at this, y'all. He ran to meet that Philistine. He did not cower back. He ran to meet him. How? Why? He had courage that had been given to him by God. God had given him courage to fight this devil because he knew the fight was fixed. God Almighty. Oh, I don't know how you feel about it, but when the fight is fixed, you don't have to worry about who's going to win. If the fight is fixed on your behalf, God has it all in his hands. Now, this and that, God's got it all in his hands. And so as he ran to meet the giant, he ran, the Bible said, and he began to sling, verse 50. So David took a stone, verse 49, and he slang it and smote the Philistine in the forehead. And the Philistine fell down dead. Giants will fall. If you put it in God's hand, God will fight your battle. The Bible says he swung the, the sling. And the stone hit the giant in the forehead, and the giant fell. And when the giant fell, the Bible said that David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. And they smote the Philistine and slew him, but he did not have a sword. But the anointing was so strong on David. The Bible said that David ran up and stood upon the Philistine. He stood on top of the devil. That's where the devil needs to be, under your feet, not on your side, so he can talk to you, not behind your back, so he can stab you. He needs to be under your feet, and if he's under your feet, you got the victory. He took the, the devil's sword, he took Goliath's sword, and cut his head off and took that head back as a trophy, <laughs> as a trophy. Can't you see little David with that head in his hands, 18, 19 years old, with that head in his hands saying, y'all was scared. Y'all don't be scared. He said, y'all was scared, but I got the giant's head in my hands. He came to me with a spear and a sword but I came to him in the name of the Lord. And the Bible said from that point on, the Israelites smote the Philistines and they won the battle. Oh, when the giants come, slay them in the name of the Lord Jesus. When trouble comes upon you and peace is nowhere in sight, when you don't know which way to turn, when the storm of life is raging, I'm so glad that I know somebody that will stand by me. When trouble is all around, pain and agony are all over. All I know I can go to the rock. I can go to the rock. Isn't it amazing that he killed the giant with a rock? And we can go to the rock that's higher than I. This rock is Jesus. He is the one. He's the one that died on the cross. But early, I said early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power in his hands. I'm so glad that he did not stay dead that he went, to, went away to prepare a place for a prepared people, and he's coming back.
to receive us unto himself. While we pray, why don't you pray with me right now? If you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, why don't you receive him right now? This hour is critical. Don't wait for tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. But today is the day of salvation. Say this simple prayer. Father, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. I thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, the wheel in the middle of the wheel, the Lamb of God that taketh away my sins. I thank you for Jesus that died on a cross, that was hung up for my hang-ups, it was stretched out for me being stretched out. And Lord, I thank you that he died for my sins. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. I'm justified just as if I'd never sinned. I thank you, Lord God, for your grace. I thank you, Lord God. I, 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 I thank you, God, that you raised Jesus from the dead for me. Jesus, come into my heart and take your abode in me. Live in me. And Lord, lead me from one good degree of grace to the next. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. If you've never received him, why don't you do it today? Yes, it's coming down. It's coming down. Giants will fall. Giants will fall. We believe, God, that the giants in your life are falling right now. Giants are falling right now. In the name of Jesus, we command these giants to come down. We command them to come down. Yes. Yes, they will. Come on, let's do it. Praise him. Praise him right there in your house. Hallelujah. Giants will. Yes, they will. Who? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. They die. Just walk around the Jericho wall. Yeah. Whoa. Let God arise, giants. They die, they die. They die. Yeah. Giants, they die. Just walk around. Come on, walk around your dear co walk. Walk around your Jericho wall right now in your room. Yeah. Oh. Let God arise. Die. Giants die right now. Your praise. Your praise. Your praise. Oh. We'll see miracles. Yes, you will. Praise those impossible things and the King of glory. Yes, he will show it. God arise, giants. Die. We'll die. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Giants, they die. Yeah. Let God arise. Giants, die. They're coming down. Coming down. I know it. Come on. We 
when you praise, when you praise, when you praise, they got to come down. When you praise, when you praise, they got to come down. When you worship, your worship, when you worship, got to come down. Yeah. Let God rise. Shout your shout. Shout your shout. They got to come down. Let God arise. They got to come. They got to come down. They got to come down. They got to come down. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brother, my sister. Love you with the love of the Lord.